So I did not do a review on AEW Revolution 2022. I was there. I was there in the building. I was actually on camera. If you notice during the six man uh, tornado match, I was there. You can literally hear me and see me on camera saying, get him Darby after he shoved me out of the way. So uh, I'm there. The clip is on Twitter. And uh, it was on Instagram, but it got taken down. So I wasn't able to do a review on the show because I got home at 2 in the morning because that traffic in Orlando is really hard. And um, I was dead tired and I did not feel well. And the next day I didn't feel well either, so I wasn't able to do my review. But I wanted to talk about Revolution briefly and where AEW goes from here. So Revolution was amazing. Revolution Live was one of the best pay-per-views and I went back and I watched it on television and damn dude what an amazing show um you gotta go see AEW live like there's nothing like going to Wrestlemania and you know being in a big stadium or like a big SummerSlam but those will always be memorable I have great memories I've been to five Wrestlemanias and um they're always gonna have a place in my heart but AEW is just fun like, the crowd's into everything, the matches all have a pretty good build-up, the, um, the show just feels fun, you know, and the crowd, although tired by the end, was into everything, even the main event. My favorite match on the show has to be a tie between the two main events, Danielson versus Moxley, and, um, the Adam Cole-Adam Page match. No one's talking about that match. And that's a great match. That match had some incredible freaking near falls. I was very into that match. And then you have uh, a really, really good and really memorable and, you know, passionate dog collar match. And, of course, you've also got, you know, the incredible opener and the three-way tornado tag match. Uh, or, the you know, the Jurassic Express against uh, Red Dragon and uh, Young Bucks. It's just a lot of good stuff on this show. I want to talk about AEW's improvement. They've really improved a lot. If you notice, the shows have gotten a lot better in the past couple months. Tony Khan has finally figured out that when it comes to a wrestling TV show, you don't want to overcrowd it with too much, too many matches that don't matter. And now I've noticed that he's been booking his shows a lot better. He's been booking them with better angles. He's been focusing more on building storylines and rivalries and feuds. So that they matter for the pay-per-views and for the big TV specials. Like we have the St. Patrick's Day special coming up next week. Battle of the Belt's going to be in April. And then, of course, we've got the um, the pay-per-view in May. So it's smart that he's kind of doing that. You know, AEW Dynamite last night was a really fun show to watch. It, they did a lot of stuff. They built up some new angles, started some new stables. They... Um, you know, Jericho has a new stable. Wardlow turned babyface finally, officially. Uh, the Moxley, Brian, William Regal segment was incredible, very emotional. Uh, they built up some matches for next week, including the Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker title change coming up next week. And the uh, six man with uh, Paige and Cole's teams going at it. So I'm glad that feud is still continuing. Because um, one thing I, that used to piss me off about AEW is I don't like when like there's a title change or a title match and then we just forget about it the next week. I don't like that. Like when Jericho lost the belt to Moxley, there should have been they, they, Jericho should have tried to get a rematch and he just moved on. And it, those things annoy me. You know, when you're a champion and you lose your title, even if you don't get an immediate rematch, you should at least be cutting promos and trying to get that rematch because in wrestling. The, the world title, the main belt of the company, should be what everybody wants. And the way it works in wrestling is everybody wants the world title, but you, you get distracted by other things. Feuds, angles, rivalries, and of course, other belts. And I think that ultimately everyone in the company should be trying to be a world champion at some point. Some will make it, some will not, but that rat race is what makes wrestling interesting. It always has. This is going back 120 years. And I really like that, you know, Adam Page is on TV more, too, because one of the lessons that I've kind of learned is that I feel like Adam Page peaked around summer of last year. I think that the interest in the Kenny Omega-Adam Page feud really dwindled after Page took time off for his kid. Now, again, it happens. He's got to take care of real-life business. I'm not saying he shouldn't have done it. And then they swapped out Page for Christian at All Out, and they changed the card for All Out. Well, 
Uh, now, I think they're realizing that Adam Page, although he is talented, he's a very charismatic baby face, you know, he's a hard worker, no question about that. He's not quite where he needs to be as world champion, so featuring him on television a little bit more, and I'm not saying he has to wrestle every single week, but he should be featured on TV a bit more, is helpful. I feel like during the build-up to the Brian Danielson match, the first one, he wasn't on TV as much as he should have been. Brian was doing a lot of work, you know, taking out the Dark Order and whatnot. Good stuff. I really like the the fact that he is going to be going out there and working on TV more. So I like that we are learning from our mistakes and we're kind of changing directions here. One thing I will say about Ring of Honor's purchase is Tony Khan totally overhyped that. Because, yes, buying Ring of Honor for a fan of Ring of Honor like Tony Khan is, like I am, Tony Khan's only a couple years older than me. You know what I mean? He's not that old and I'm not that old, but we're, we're pretty similar in age. And Ring of Honor does have a lot of history with me and probably with him. But the mainstream wrestling fan, the one that you want to start watching AEW, because all the hardcores already watch it, you want to get the mainstream wrestling fan, has no idea what Ring of Honor is. Now, granted, yes... I'm glad he has tape library, but, and the name ROH, you know, the, the, those initials, but they don't really mean much to the mainstream fan, so you have to educate the mainstream fan, or you have to use that tape to tell backstories of your current roster, because there's tons of matches from guys that were in Ring of Honor that are now in AEW, like the Young Bucks, like Adam Page, like Adam Cole, the Red Dragon, there's Brian Danielson, CM Punk, I mean, these guys all had runs in Ring of Honor. But I think he overhyped that a bit. I think he was making it seem like it would change the business, and really it won't because WWE is still number one. AEW is still number two based on revenue and based on overall company size. And I know that Tony Khan wants to increase AEW size, but these things take time. AEW has only been in business for three years, and you're not going to get big overnight as far as coming close to WWE. It's just not going to happen. But he's done very well for himself. Uh, for the past three years. However, AEW is not a profitable company right now. So hiring more and more people is going to end up being a detriment long term. Now, I'm not a business person. I know that the cons are wealthy. I mean, no, I am a business person, excuse me, but I'm not in his business. So maybe he's got a plan. He might have a five, 10 year plan where he can turn a profit. But AEW, I mean, these guys are blowing a lot of money on talent. Now, Jeff Hardy is a good acquisition. Keith Lee, I have nothing against these new talents being brought in. Shane Strickland, they're all very talented. They all have a place. But you've only got three hours of weekly TV and a couple of YouTube shows. Obviously, some guys are going to get moved to the ROH brand, I'm going to guess, and work there. But it just feels like there's the company is, is almost like bloated with talent. Which is not always a bad thing. It's good that guys get to take time off, but you have these guys like Tony Nese and Jay Lethal who have been on Dynamite, what, twice? Maybe three times total in the past like six months uh, or the past three, four months. And, you know, they never get enough shine. And so it is one of those things where they need to be on TV a little bit more, but there's not enough TV. So it, it's tricky, you know what I mean? But I got to tell you, you should try. You should try to attend an AEW show live, whether it be a Dynamite. Pay per views are better because you're gonna get four. You're gonna get over four hours of wrestling, and you're gonna get some good matches, and you're gonna have a good time. I mean, I had a, an amazing time at Revolution, but you really should try to go out there because even though WWE, like I said, WrestleManias and pay per views are fun. Raws can be a drag. Those three hour Raws drag and smackdown can be fun i went to a smackdown last year but aew is just more fun you know what i mean i always have fun at wrestling shows but aew the crowds there are kind of more to my generation there's some of them are a bit younger some of them are a bit older but it's usually around like 20 to like 50 whereas wwe it's the opposite you got a lot of kids a lot of old people and that middle crowd you know that demo is not really there so AEW feels more like a rock concert, whereas WWE, uh, it's still a wrestling show, but it, it's not really exciting like how it used to be, you know, back in the day. Not, not. I mean, I'm not saying it sucks. I mean, sometimes it sucks, but it's also, I like going to live wrestling and AEW is just more, more lively, more uh, vibrant. So anyways, I'm back, guys. I, you know, I haven't done a lot of content, but I have 
videos coming up soon here on the channel that I'm working on and you know discussions and thoughts and all kinds of stuff so look forward to that thank you again um, sorry I took some time off I haven't really been focused on this. I have a lot of stuff going on in my personal life but I'm good and we will have a lot more to come have a great one talk to you soon